Hello everybody, my name is King6. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to play Karthus jungle like a pro. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you have the right rune page. For your runes on Karthus, please don't take Predator. That was only a thing for a very short amount of time with the Karthus new boosting strategy. If you are playing normal Karthus jungle, always take Dark Harvest, Cheap Shot, Eyeball Collection, and Ravenous Hunter. For your secondary page, take Presence of Mind and Coup de Gras. You might be wondering why you're going for that. We're not really going to be building any mana items on Karthus, so mana is going to be a huge issue in team fights and long skirmishes. Not only that, but Presence of Mind will help out with your ultimate's cooldown whenever you get a kill or assist, and Coup de Gras is just nice overall for all of Karthus's abilities. And then for your rune stats, you want to go double adaptive force with scaling HP. If you're really shitty at kiting the jungle camps, then sure, go ahead, take the flat armor. But I really recommend going for the scaling HP since it's good against both AP and AD enemy team comps. Plus your hunter's talisman is going to be giving you so much healing back if you're kiting properly that you won't really need that extra armor. However, if you are going against an AD jungler like Kha'Zix or Zin Zhao that you're worried about one-shotting you early game, then sure, go ahead and take the armor. Next, we're going to take a look at Karthus's level order. The one you're going to be taking 90% of the time is Q level 1, E level 2, and W level 3, maxing Q first, E second, and W last. And of course, taking points in your ultimate whenever you can. This is your standard page. The second skill order that you will be using is this one. The only difference is this one you will be using whenever you don't think you'll be able to gank a lane because all your laners are pushed up and you're not going to be fighting the enemy jungle on scuttle. This is for purely power farming, which is why you're taking a second point in your Q at level 3 and then leveling up your W at level 4 since your W doesn't actually help you clear monster camps. And of course, you guys are going to want to know what the best items to take on Karthus jungle are. Always start Hunter's Talisman, Warding Totem, and Refillable Potion. On your first back, you want to get Stalker's Blade since it'll help out your ganks greatly with landing your Qs and helping you close the distance, killing the enemies before they can get away. You want to try to get your Runic Echoes as fast as possible and your Sork Shoes as fast as possible. After that, you want to get an Oblivion Orb ASAP. It's going to help out your magic penetration a whole lot, helping you greatly with pinching off those kills with your ultimates and Qs. Karthus has loads of raw damage. The main thing is, is being able to penetrate the enemy's magic resist to make sure that huge damage is getting through. And then after that, you have the option for going for Rabadon if they're not building any MR at that point or if they are starting to build MR, it's a little bit later in the game, go ahead and pick up the Void Stab before you get the Rabadon. After that, things are pretty situational on Karthus. You can get anything from a Hourglass to a Lich Bane. It just depends on what's best for that situation. Just try to stick to items that give you ability, power, and some kind of utility. The most challenging aspects of Karthus is learning how to kite monster camps, which I'll be showing you in this video, and also learning how to land them on champions, which I will also be showing you in this video. The first jungle path I want to show you guys is a very aggressive one and it is based off of this invade. Karthus is one of the strongest level 1 champions in the game since his Q has no cooldown, it's only 1 second and it does insane damage. Especially since we have a Braum, this invade is a no brainer against their team comp, plus invades in solo Q are OP. So we just wait, we wait, we wait. This is my favorite spot to wait because you can just run down the mid lane like this, get in the bush. And if you don't see anyone mid, then you know they didn't see you. You run in the bush and they never ward this bush. And then you can wait. If they invade, you can counter fight it or just let them walk past. So this is where we end up waiting. Braum leads. Zyra has terrible reaction time. Braum gets off a of proc. He lands the Q, which entices me to flash and Lucian to flash. And we pick up a kill. And the main information we got here is that Zyra blew her flash, which is extremely important because now it will allow me to be very aggressive and do something you don't normally do on Karthus, which is a level two red buff gank. So just red in the gank. So I'm gonna get my leash, go bot lane, since we know for a fact Zyra doesn't have leash, you'll have no way to get away. Braum can even use his flash to auto her if he needs to. And then me and Lucian can just follow up with our autos and uh, destroy her. And she'll be quite easy to land Qs on with no flash as well. So as the red buff spawns in, ideally you get a leash from your bot lane. But on Karthus jungle, I always, always, always start red buff. Doesn't matter if I am bot or top, always start red. Blue buff is useless. As long as you are starting Hunter's Talisman and Refillable Potion, you will have enough mana without a blue buff altogether. Which is why you really need the red buff for the extra damage, health regen. But more importantly, it also sets you up by your Krugs, which give you the most experience out of any jungle monster camp in the game. Which is the most important thing. 
Okay, so we get the leash. I start out in melee because if you make your laner's leash, they'll oftentimes leave. So uh, you try to tank a little bit. So you're just gonna Q auto, Q, Q auto to do the most damage and take the least amount of damage is Q auto, Q, Q auto, Q, Q auto. The reason for that is early and mid game on Karthus, your Q is on a shorter cooldown than your auto attacks. So by you trying to auto attack in between every single Q, especially against monster camps, you'll be missing out on a lot of damage. So it's just best to start out with a Q auto since your auto attack isn't on cooldown yet and then do two Qs then auto to maximize your damage. In this case, I take several auto attacks because I want Braun to stay in it longer. I get a really good leash. And as we are finishing the red buff, as you can tell, I'm moving away Q, Q auto to get closer to the gank so I can get here faster. And I finish off the red buff quite easily and I'm pretty much full health and uh, Braun took a little bit of damage. And then you'll be able to see here how we come in for the gank. We just try to get as far behind them as we can. We don't run straight from here. That way we get the most amount of time to kill them. Zyra, no flash. Braum does a beautiful job landing his Q. It's an easy setup. I get another Dark Harvest stack, which is great. And now I can move on to the next part. I know Silas didn't start blue since his bot lane didn't leash him and I saw Pantheon come to lane late with missing mana. Having that knowledge, it's much faster for me to take Scuttle Crab and blow out his jungle than it is for me to run all the way over to my jungle and potentially try to stop him from taking it since it's a shorter walk. Jungle is jungle. It doesn't matter whose side it's on. If it's closer to you and you can take it safely, just take it. In this case, I know I can solo Silas, plus I've won my bot lane and I have a pushing mid lane. So even if Silas does do his red buff and do his blue buff, I can mess him up. My teammates can get there faster. And worst case scenario, if I did have the leave, I've already taken the scuttle and can leave safely. Now, if I thought Silas started on blue, Obviously, I wouldn't be going into his side of the jungle, but I would still take the scuttle crab and then I'd go into my golems, raptors, and then work into my other side of the jungle. Now I'm going to show you guys the standard Karthus jungle pathing that you're going to be using the majority of the time. We're starting on a red buff. We're not getting a proper leash, so kiting this is going to be really important. I did two Qs then in auto because I was trying to get even farther away from it to take less damage. Normally, if you're getting a real leash, you'll Q auto, Q, Q auto. In this case, I'm just doing the best with I can with what I got just QQ auto, moving back, moving back. I take minimal damage, I have pretty much full health, but for how shit my leash was, this is pretty good. This is what you wanna do 90% of the time, right in the golems, because golems give you the most experience. Look how I attack the golems, and I start out closer to the medium one. You can't see him yet, because the game sucks, but trust me, he's there. And I start out closer to him. The smaller golems have more movement speed than the big one, and they also do way less damage. They do a fourth the damage and they're much quicker. So you can use them to body block by using the wall and their bodies. So I start out by hitting the big one. I'm trying to hit it with only, only hitting the big one with my Q. If I hit both of them with my Q, it does have damage. And I'm trying to kill the big one since it does four times the damage. And so far it hasn't hit me yet because I'm using the wall on this one to block it. Okay, it hits me once. I smite it. Make sure you save your smite for the golems. And then you want to try to hit all three of them with your Q to maximize your damage here. And as you can see, I'm full HP, guys, playing a mage in the jungle. Full HP, really, really freaking fast clear. And the beauty of this clear is it gives you so many options. You're getting your red buff, which is the most important buff. You're getting golems, which is the highest experience camp, which is arguably the most important camp in the game. And then at this point, if you can gank your top lane, let's say if I had a laner who actually had CC, uh, something like Maokai or Nautilus top, something like that, I could easily have gone from golems into here and then gank the enemy top lane from behind. They never see it coming since your Karth is and it's a really easy kill. In this case, I don't want to touch it because it's a Nasus and uh, Garen can just queue, queue off his slow. So this could go wrong in a lot of ways and it will waste a lot of my time. But let's say it was gankable. I come up behind, really easy kill. And at that point, I can take Scuttle and blow out their whole side of the jungle. Typically when the enemy jungler sees you come up here, obviously they're starting on the red. Typically when they see that, they'll uh, go into your jungle. So at that point you just trade your jungle for their jungle, plus you got a kill and Karthus clears faster than most junglers. So it's an amazing trade. You have so many options by doing this path. In this case, I decide, okay, not gankable. And I'm just gonna continue with my clear, clearing insanely fast, hitting the whole camp with my Q. Watch how I'm constantly moving away from it by a little bit because the little chickens have insane attack speed and actually do more than the big one if you stand still. And especially if you stand still, they'll surround you and all munch on you. So I'm constantly moving a little bit, not moving large amounts because I don't want to reset the camp, but I'm always trying to keep the little ones moving. That way they're stumbling past each other. 
I'm still basically full HP in the jungle. And now I can just clear the wolves. You see how I'm moving towards my blue buff this whole time. I can clear my wolves, blue, gromp, it's that easy. At that point, I could back get items if I don't see a gank. If I feel like I could gank mid or bot at that point, I could easily go gank it. Very simple. If I was going to gank bot, I ideally you want to come behind them. So if you to get behind them, you have to run all the way back here. That's fine. Or to get behind them, if you just run here and you're behind them, then that's also okay. With mid lane, this isn't gankable, obviously, because it's pushed. And this isn't gankable, obviously, because my laners are also pushing and uh, the enemies are playing pretty far back. So in this case, I would just clear this out and then recall. After recall, you would go to your golem since they'll be spawning back in. Then I could gank top, or then I could just continue into raptors, this, this, and this, and it will just reset. And at that point, I'll be level six and can do all sorts of stuff. All right, now it's time to go over some tips and tricks when playing Karthus to maximize your ganking potential and fighting enemy champions in general. When looking for a gank, you wanna to try to come up behind the enemies to maximize your time. Whenever they make their path in clear, if they're gonna run away, or engage is when you want to use your W to slow them. If they haven't decided what they're going to do yet, if you throw out your W, they're just going to avoid it and it's going to make it harder to kill them. In this case, Pantheon runs away. I know he's trying to get away. I throw down my W, so even if he stays in the bush or moves to the next one, I'll have vision of him with my W and he'll get slowed. He's greatly slowed and has his magic resist reduced. I throw out a Q to stop his pathing towards the next bush, so he decides to jump on me. If you're paying attention, you can tell I'm stunned, yet he just got hit by a heavy steaming load. The reason for that is the moment he went to jump on me, I hovered the cursor in front of my champion closely, knowing that whenever he jumped on me, he'd land there. And Karthus's Q is on a low enough cooldown that I could pinch it off slightly before he landed on me, which cost him roughly half of his health. I then proceed to ult to kill low health Nico and also help my team in the team fight. If you can master this technique of still landing your Qs, Whenever someone is about to jump on you, you will do very well with Karthus. A really easy way to land your Qs consistently on Karthus is find a way to get the enemies to chase you. Whenever the enemies are chasing you, it's much easier to place your Qs to where they'll have to step over it, thus increasing your chances substantially. If you slow the enemies with your smite or your W first, that's not an issue. But if they're not slowed and they have to run to you, it's much easier to land it since you can simply put the Q slightly in front of them to where if they even step forward at all, they will get hit by it. If they start to run away and you can't reach them with your Q, just keep chasing them because they'll juke really bad, making it easier for you to catch up and then hit them with the Q once they put themselves against a wall or a turret. Whenever you're dealing with enemies close up and personal, don't forget to flick on your E to do some insane damage. Plus your E applies Dark Harvest instantly, so if they're below half health, flick on that E and watch their health just get blown up. Even if the enemies CC you with a suppression or a knockup, your E will stay on. So in this case, Malzahar ulted me and he lost over half his health, which I also healed off of because my Ravenous Hunter, just because I had my E on. Even if somebody's high damage, don't forget, just keep moving away from them and throwing out Q slightly in front of them and they will land. There is a bit of a learning curve to this. After you play around 10 games of Karthus Jungle, you should feel really comfortable with consistently hitting melee champions with your Q. Against ranged champions, if they're just as strong as you and there's nothing really forcing them to run away from you because you don't have teammates, then you're typically gonna have to hit them with your W slow or a blue smite to consistently land your Qs. In team fights, don't just throw out your wall to zone. It's really important that you actually land it on enemies because it is a massive slow and it also shreds their magic resist, which will help you do insane damage. I'm gonna show you that scenario again on a standard clear, red buff into golems. This time I have a scion and I see the Kel is pushing up really hard. She doesn't really have any escapes in her kit. So at the very least here, I'm gonna get her flash. I walk up, throw out a Q behind her. The next Q I threw out was terrible. I should have autoed immediately after the first one for the red buff slow. Notice how since she has to run away, I can just throw the cues out slightly behind her and still on top of her. So if she stands still, she gets hit. And if she runs away, she gets hit. In the meantime, I can take Scuttle or go into Jarvan's jungle. I know he started red, so I can go into his blue buff whenever I want. I take Scuttle, see Kel pushed up again. I can come up behind her. Now that I'm level three, I can use my wall and slow her. We get her flash and she didn't even come close to getting away. And your early ganks, try to weave in an auto attack in between each Q. Yes, on monster camps in the early game, it's Q auto, Q, Q auto. 
but against champions, especially once you have red buff, landing that auto attack in between each Q is guaranteed damage. Plus with the red buff slow, it'll make it a lot easier for you to land your next Q. Plus the enemies tend to juke a lot when you're trying to hit them with your Qs on Karthus, which will allow you to get even closer to them. If you just throw out constant Qs and miss them because you're not auto attacking, you're doing no damage and you're not slowing them. I came up behind Kel. We have her in a great spot and she has no flash. So I know for a fact that if I use my E, will be able to kill her. I do my best to stay on top of her, weaving in autos in between queues, keeping my E on her nonstop. After I do red buff golems and gank, unless I know for a fact it's gonna be a kill, I try not to use my E since your E drains your mana so hard. And if you don't have blue buff yet and you're pretty sure it won't be a kill, you really don't wanna be using your E. Something you guys need to understand is Karthus's base damage is stupid high. If you can put yourself in situations where the enemies have to walk into you or towards you, you will get a kill. In this case, Silas doesn't know I'm over here and he's clearing the wave. What do you think he's gonna do after he's done killing those minions? He's probably gonna come over here for his golems or rotate mid to stop my Zerath. So all I have to do after killing these golems is just wait for a couple of seconds and let the prize come to me. It's that easy. Now, if I were to run out right now, I might land one Q, but he's immediately going to start running away. So instead, I wait. I'm a patient guy. I time it pretty well. I hover my cursor. I start my Q slightly before I even see him. I land it. His dash is down. I auto in between it, land my W, and I land another Q. That is the power of Karthus, guys. You got to watch out. That Dark Harvest hits hard, and the Qs hit even harder. The final thing I want to show you pertains mostly to the late game. Throughout the game on Karthus, you want to use your ult whenever you know for a fact you're going to get a kill with it. It's not worth using unless you're sure it's going to be at least one kill. In this case, they step up on me, I get Zyra low, and I back off. I don't stay and try to finish her off and maybe kill myself. Instead, I back off, I move away for about four seconds, and then I start my ult. If I didn't back off that far and started my ult, I could have gotten CC. That used to happen to me a lot. I was greedy and wanted to ult within a second or two of them being low. But if you're in a situation where you don't know where all the enemies are, but you can see the ones directly in front of you, try to move away from them, get out of their line of sight, get off their mind, and then start your ult. It'll be worth it because if they cancel your channel, it'll put it on a full cooldown. In a true team fight, ideally, you want to wait to ult till after you die or if you're in a situation where all the enemies have ran away and you can get a couple of kills. You don't want to ult before you die typically in a team fight since they can cancel it and put it on a full cooldown. And whenever you're dead and you use it, it's a guarantee they can't cancel it. And that is going to wrap up this video on how to play Karthus jungle like a pro in 18 minutes. Do understand that I enjoy making these videos. However, they take a lot more time and effort than making a top five, top 10 video. So if you did enjoy this video, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Every time you do that, it helps out the video and the channel quite a bit. I really do appreciate the support. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.